Maddie Calpatty, thank you for a $20 super chat. Maddie asks, I've replaced my O3 unit in my GetBarC 35V2, and it says there's no radio connection. Do I have to reconfigure the O3 to recognize ELRS? I've replaced a few motors, but other than that, I know less than nothing. Yeah, Maddie, there's uh, some confusion going on here, unfortunately. Um, the O3 doesn't talk to the Express LRS receiver or the Express LRS controller at all. The O3, they, they are separate worlds and never really interact with each other whatsoever. So you replace the, the O3. Y. Yes. Uh, fair. Um, but if he, uh, you think he replaced the wire harness, maybe that's true. So some flight controllers... So the O3 has the ability to bind to the DJI RC controller, and if it does, then it will send a receiver signal to the flight controller. And some flight controllers will put the O3's receiver signal on the same UART as your Express LRS receiver. And in that case, when you put the O3 on the flight controller, it makes your receiver not work anymore, because the flight controller is getting two signals on the same UART and they conflict. What might have happened is that GEPRC shipped the original O3 air unit and they removed that receiver wire from the harness going from the O3 to the flight controller. And then when you got your new O3, you put your new wiring harness in and you replaced it. And now, so what you would need to do is remove the yellow S-bus wire from the harness going between the O3 and the flight controller and that might fix your, fix your situation. Is latency good enough on the Walksnail Goggles L? I didn't like it. I thought it was high. I found it distracting. Uh, other people have said they're okay with it. That's my opinion, though. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for the donation. Goggle L versus DJI Neo 3. What's the best to start digital? The question there is whether you want to start with the DJI uh, ecosystem or the Walksnail ecosystem. That's the goggles are going to be. You're not going to pick an ecosystem based on the goggles. You're going to pick the goggle based on the ecosystem, in my opinion. Uh, before the DJI O4 Pro and the O4 Lite were well, they're not released, but they have been strongly hinted at. And if those rumors turn out to be true, like the DJI, the performance, the the rumored performance of those systems, and the rumored existence of a a small version that runs off one to three S voltage, takes a lot of the wind out of walk sales snail walk sales sales oh sales walk snails sales say that three times fast. Um, because one of Walksnail's big advantages has been the existence of a 1S and a light VTX that are smaller and lighter for, for smaller aircraft. Um, yeah, uh, I think that a lot of people, especially once the O4 releases, assuming the O4 lives up to the rumored specs and capabilities, I think a lot of people are going to see the DJI as the way to go. Bailey Case wants to know, is there a reason to still run capacitors on digital quads? I'm running a SpeedyB F405 mini stack in a 3-inch frame, and putting a cap would be tight on room. What risk am I running here? Uh, yes, absolutely, you should still run caps on digital quads. On analog quads, the lack of a capacitor means you have visible electrical noise in your video feed. On a digital quad, the electrical noise is not as directly visible, but it still does have an effect. What you'll see is potentially reduced frame rate or reduced range when there's electrical noise. However, you are correct that digital quads and digital video transmitters are better at filtering out that noise, and a lot of people feel that they tolerate the lack of a capacitor better. You should also keep in mind, though, that the capacitor is filtering the noise from the motors and the ESC, and that, of course, uh, and the gyro, and that, of course, <coughs> has an effect, okay? So you still want a capacitor on there. It's going to give you cleaner gyro. It's going to get, It's potentially going to give you better video. Uh, if you're running 4S, you might get away with not putting one on. If you're, I would always, like, put it on the X-T60. Like, that's worse, but it's still better than nothing, um, especially if you use that extra space to do a bigger capacitor. You could put the capacitor on some 18 or 20-gauge wire, and put it somewhere else in the frame. And again, it's not as good as having it directly connected, but it's still better than nothing.